All right, so I've arrived in Portland where for the first time I am flying and renting a vehicle. Yeah, onto the boat. Gonna bring it down to the boat yard. So tomorrow is Sunday, I'll bring it down then. They'll install the mast all day Monday. I will bring it out Tuesday morning and then Amber is coming down. So I will pick her up Tuesday afternoon. My operations manager at my business is also leaving during peak season too. So it's gonna be a bit of a crazy week. I don't know how much I'll be able to video, but that's what I'm up to anyways. All right, let's go. All right, so I just found out that I will not have clearance to go south. And what that means is I need to get going right away. joys of solo sailing okay guys i just want to interrupt this video to interject that so this was my very first time getting up to the boat and then making a voyage on it including getting off of the dock getting back onto the dock all on my own so i was in a rush which i will explain uh further in this video but i was indeed quite nervous getting this boat underway all on my own for the first time. I don't know how to do certain things like, as you can see here, trying to turn on the chart plotter. So I had to go down to the switchboard to try to figure it out. But we ended up figuring out most of these things. All right. The wind is, this is definitely a challenging one. The wind is pushing us that way. Yeah, the wind is pushing us that way, the current's pushing us that way. And here's the very first time that the boat is moving on her own with just me All on right. board. And so yes, there's a lot of snappy kind of head mount footage in this because you know, again, I was in a rush. I didn't have time to set up a lot of cameras and all that. I just wanted to get some footage of it. So uh, if you want to come along for the voyage, mostly in first person, then keep watching. And if you want to see some docking fails at the end, stay tuned. All right, easy enough. It's always easier getting going in this spot than it is to get back in. We are underway. Our temperature at 2000 is right around 60 degrees Celsius. We have that much smoke coming out, just a little bit. All right, now after I've left, being the incredible navigator that I am, I'm gonna check what the ETA is and I, thought that I would be able to clear the bridge going south, uh, but instead I will have to go north. So I'm doing my least favorite thing is, which is leaving in a hurry, but I left. I will want to keep a close lookout this entire trip for logs. All right, so now I got to figure out this navigation thing. So the bridge clearance, it says 80 feet, but then NOAA has a flood stage two, which says plus 18 feet. And I'll be from low to medium tide, which would probably be plus one and a half feet. So basically that gives me maybe 61 feet of room and I still haven't checked exactly but I, I believe the mast is like 62 feet or something like that so I, I think the former owner said like 65 would be plenty. Here I'm testing the autopilot and while it did work reliably uh, it definitely drove like a drunk fish and it would constantly pass the point where I'm trying to aim it going left and then right 
So add one more thing to the list of something we need to upgrade because if we're going to be spending long periods at the helm and under sail, it's going to be extra challenging to not be able to keep the boat pointed straight. Everything is working great except for, you know, the engine overheating at 3000 or more maybe. All right, the exhaust elbow is measuring 76 degrees. The transmission was measuring 137 degrees. Let's measure a few more. The top of the engine block is measuring 172. The back of the heat exchanger uh, was measuring 98. All right, and all of that is while the temperature is measured exact, measuring exactly 80 degrees Celsius at the gauge, a hair above 26. Now that I got in touch with the rigger and the marina, I'm a lot more relaxed. And now this is just a nice journey. I'm gonna slow down a little bit and appreciate it. Man, let me tell you, nothing makes you rethink how much time you spend at the office as when you're out here in nature. And then you think, why do I spend so much time doing anything else? So we are definitely getting closer here. Uh, we are a little over halfway, probably Actually, probably about two-thirds of the way. Vancouver Railroad Bridge, Vancouver Railroad Bridge. This is sailing vessel. Do you copy? 2904, Vancouver. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm requesting a clearance. Over. Roger. Roger. Yeah, I've got two to get across, and I'll open for you. Roger that. Thank you. Holy crap, that was fun. They responded. Yeah, that's a big mooring buoy. Probably uh, hold me pretty well, though. All right. So I am just past the bridge, so I'm ready to uh, get into the marina. Okay, um, there should be, the rigger should be down there uh, waving at you here in a second. So, the first journey was done, and I didn't die, and I didn't even scratch the boat. Now to prepare to remove the mast from the boat, I needed to remove all of the mast electrical connections. And that's where I found a hilarious surprise. Oh my gosh, sometimes it's like, you gotta be kidding me. On this panel, was this Sea Talk device tray cover just to catch the frickin' water there. And now I think I know at least the probably the biggest source of leaking. All right, so this is what my boat looks like without a mast. It is uh, very sleek. <laughs> it's a power boat. There's the gobs of compost. Right there. <laughs> All right, so today I will have to dock in the wind solo. So hang on to your horses. Hold on to your horses. Uh, hang on to your hats. This is gonna get a little bit crazy. I will put the buoys out on both sides if I remember. Uh, 
Uh, we'll have the boat hook out. We'll plan it out. I got my Windex, which if you can see that, it's a piece of floss. So I'll know just where the wind is blowing. And based on how horizontal it is, how hard it's blowing. This forecast for, you know, not strong winds, but stronger than the dead calm of yesterday. I believe it's 11 knots with gusts up to, I don't know, 18, something like that. Hopefully, uh, you know, we can wait for some, a little bit of a lull and then uh, try it. All right, let's do this. The nice thing though is that now without the mast, I can get under this bridge. Well, that's pretty crazy. Glad I didn't uh, smash into that. Okay, we're doing this. Luckily the wind has quieted down, so that's really nice. So I'm very thankful for that. But it is pushing me towards that boat, so I have the two bumpers out there. This boom in the way is really gonna suck. Okay, pause. So, as you can see here, there is my slip right here, and then there's boats obviously behind where my boat would be, you know, on the other side of like the fairway or whatever you call this. Now, what I want you guys to notice is that as I'm drifting the last final, say, boat length, I preemptively shift into reverse. I don't, I'm not thrusting it in reverse, but I shift into reverse just so that all I have to do when I want to apply reverse thrust is I just give it some throttle and it's already shifted. So that's what I do here, but the key is, is that I shifted it into reverse. When I tried to clamber over the railing to get onto the dock, I left it idling in reverse. And also remember that boom that I said will be kind of annoying to jump over? that small fraction of a second or few seconds that it delayed me while you know stepping over it definitely played into this situation of a very newbie docker on a boat of this size so here i'm lining it up pretty decently no, it wasn't perfect again the wind was blowing me away from the dock Here, my, my speed was okay. It would have been fine for me to have gotten, you know, further into the dock. And then, obviously, you know, being able to use prop walk here. Okay, so here's the delay with me stepping over the boom. And then, okay, pause. Right here, you can only see the boat because that's where the camera is facing, but I am screaming in my head with like terror of losing this thing because now this is when the boat is slowly starting to accelerate in reverse and starting to pull 20,000 pounds of boat away from me. And I was crouching. Luckily, I in my windsurfer days, I know that if you crouch, it's less likely for you to be pulled over into the water. So I was crouching down really low, trying to keep my center of gravity really low just pulling with every fiber of muscle that I possibly had. And, well. You can see the back of the boat starting to come in a little bit. Of course, the nose is now starting to push out because remember there's the wind and I was able to get back on board. In retrospect, I should have just pulled all the way out, did a full attempt again. But what you see here is that, you know, I ended up getting it kind of close and the wind wasn't strong enough that I knew I was able to push off of my buddy's boat here. And then I was able to finally dock calmly and everything. Putting it in neutral instead of leaving it in gear when you step off the boat is always a good idea. <laughs> a 
lesson learned. <laughs> if that was uh, stronger winds, I would have been going for a swim. I, w I had already decided that that's what I was gonna do. <laughs> Definitely not my proudest moment. Should have taken more time to do this more carefully, but you know, I got it done. I didn't hit anything. I didn't lose the boat. And also last point when it comes to this is that the fact that I had even considered jumping into the water to swim after the boat, like would have been the dumbest thing because you can see here, the boat would have just ended up kind of smacking into the dock and maybe that other boat behind me. If I would have jumped in, I would have compounded my problems exponentially. It's just really good to think these things through and I've done this plenty of times before single-handed, but you know, when it comes to a boat of this size, not being able to manhandle it nearly as quickly, it was really a big learning experience and I'm pretty embarrassed by it, but hey, it is what it is and I'm not gonna try to hide it. There it is, there's my boat docking fail. Um, I wasn't able to get to as many projects as I thought I was gonna be able to in this video, but rest assured there's plenty more coming up. I am trying to get through these videos quicker because like I said, we have a lot more exciting content coming up and the final delivery down is coming up very quickly. Uh, we just got maybe another episode, maybe two of getting things fixed. You can always spend more time working on the boat and I wish I had more time, but I wanna get this thing down to where I live and where I work. So, okay, that's all we got for this episode. Thanks a whole lot for joining. Please like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right.